Hello everyone, welcome back to a new video. I'm in the calf barn right now because I have to stop cutting for a few hours since the crop is getting a little bit too dry already. So I have to quit because otherwise the alfalfa is not gonna ferment properly and then we don't have the proper nutritional value in the feed to be able to feed our cattle. So I have to stop for a while, but that gives me a chance to make some really cool drone footage of everybody else, which usually I don't get a chance to do that because I have to be busy cutting. So for now, just kind of looking at all the animals and enjoying being with the animals because during silaging, I really do start to miss that because I am in the tractor all day. So. Yeah, I just, any chance I get, I will go out, see the animals, take care of them, check them, and make sure everything's good with them, because otherwise, I go into withdrawal. <laughs> so I'm out here in the barn with Shine. Like I've mentioned for the last couple of videos, she's due on the 27th, today is the 20th. So she will be <laughs> having her babies very, very soon. And since I've been kicked off the swather for today because the crop was drying too fast, I've just been, you know, prepping a little bit, making sure that when she does go into labor, we have everything ready and giving her a little extra love in because she deserves it. But I'm checking for signs of her going into labor. And she's not quite there yet. So what I'm looking for, in case you're new here, is ligaments here. So there are two like pencils or rods that run along the sides of the tail. And if you just kind of wiggle around, you'll be able to feel them. But one sign that she's getting really close is that she's super jiggly here. Like I can really poke underneath that tail but I can still feel those ligaments there one other telltale sign when you're looking at a goat that might go into labor is if her udder has popped now she's been filling up significantly the last couple of weeks but there's still not like a significant pot pop so we're waiting but you can see this is kind of becoming a little bit indented and divoted. That means everything back here is loosening up and getting ready so that she can pass that baby through with ease. Right, Shine? Yeah. So with her changing like that relatively quickly, I just know she's gonna have her baby when I'm in the swather <laughs> and if I need to, I'll be coming back to help her assist with the labor, but this will be her second time kidding. So I'm really hoping that she's going to be okay by herself. And she's really affectionate, which isn't that characteristic of her. Like she'll enjoy some pets, but she usually tries to run away first when I am trying to give her a bit of attention. <laughs> And now she's consistently asking for it, so. Yeah. You gonna have a pretty little baby? You gonna give me a little girl? <laughs> oh, you're such a sweetie. Hey, girls. <laughs> and there's Batman. Hey, buddy. So Batman is a buck that I bought from a lovely ranch in Manitoba last year. And I bought him so that he could bring some color into the herd. So I'm really excited to see what he brings. Are you chewing on me, Rosetta? I'm really excited to see what he'll bring with Shine. Oh, it's 
it's the following day. I'm trying something new, but I'm not sure if I like it. Um, I've got the camera on a holder here, but we're working on a field that we call 21. Everybody's on the same field right now. The chopper, the trucks, me, we're all on the same field. I've been cutting since around 9.30. And I'm almost done this field actually, so that's nice. It's really cold today. And I think I'm gonna finish this one hopefully before lunch, but no guarantees. <laughs> and I broke one knife or section, I guess, just the little triangle thingies that you have on the swather there that cut all the crop. It's called a section. And I think that's about all that's happened this morning. So I'm just opening up a new field. I'm on like the second round and this little clump refuses to come off. So I'm gonna go see what's up. Usually this indicates a broken section, so if that's the case, I've already got all of the knives teed up perfectly, or the broken. If that's the case, I've already got all the sections teed up perfectly, so hopefully it will be an easy fix if I need to fix something. Nothing broken that time. Sometimes an old clump of whatever crop was there last year gets stuck and can't get cut through the sections. So that was more than likely the case here. So clean it off and off we go. to do after this and then I'll be going up and down the field and this is our last field that we're going to be silaging for this round of <laughs> silaging. Count how many times I say silaging in this video but yeah that's kind of where we're at right now. Looks really nice and green so far although the grass is a little bit short so I'm not sure what happened but Something happened with the tarp where it is significantly slower than it should be so I'm gonna see if I can take a screwdriver and dig out some dirt because I'm see because uh, I'm thinking that that's the problem but we'll see so hopefully it's nothing too problematic <sighs> let's see. maybe a little bit but that's not nearly enough to make it do what it was doing I don't see anything and this one was not that bad like it wasn't this one wasn't the one that was stalling, so... Uh, it 
it doesn't look like anything to me, but I am no mechanic. I'm just an operator. Beautiful day though. So again, I don't know what the problem is. We're gonna see if it can work. Oh, yeah, so that's not good. <laughs> I've already phoned boss man, so hopefully he can help me figure this out. probably two hours, three hours, I don't know, the hours start to blur together after a little while. After I found that tarp kind of sticking and I went and looked it out, gave it a good smack and it's been working fine ever since. So I don't know what was wrong with it, there wasn't really any dirt in there. That would have been like enough to cause a problem so I'm not sure <laughs> what that was about but it's fine now. I have run into a little bit of trouble with the grass that we have in here. It's a really tough kind of grass. It's dry, but it's still seizing up the knives every now and then. I think because it's so wispy and maybe hard to cut. But I did tilt the knives a bit more forward and it seems to be scooping it up a little bit better so I haven't had it seize up the knives after that yet. I don't want to speak too soon and jinx myself so yeah it's going. It's going. I'm almost done this grassy chunk here and then I'm gonna have to go all the way that way and finish the rest of the alfalfa after I'm done that. So, I kind of cut off yesterday just because I was getting really, really frustrated. I was cutting their grass at the middle end of this field here and it's a really wispy, like thin kind of grass and it very easily gets stuck in between the knives and instead of cutting, I should say sections, that's the official term for it. Anyway, instead of cutting, it kind of mulches and then it just plugs up every single section so that I have to go out and manually pick out all the little pieces of grass. And it gets worse when it's, you know, earlier in the morning or later in the evening because of the dew. So I tried cutting this morning and it immediately, I don't think I even got two meters into the new swath and it was plugged up already. So I decided to start on this end of the field. It's more alfalfa, there's a couple of kosher weeds, there's lamb's quarters, and Overall, these plants are thicker stocked, they're, they're stronger, so it actually cuts instead of just getting stuck in the sections. So that's why I'm on this end of the field. And yeah, it's cutting way better. So that's kind of why I just ended yesterday's footage. I guess I was getting really tired. So if I look tired from yesterday, it's because I was. <laughs> But it's going better on this end of the field, so the plan is to cut all of this stuff that'll cut nicely in the morning, and then hopefully by the time I'm done all of this stuff, the grass will be dry enough that I can just finish that off without too much trouble. That's the plan, and otherwise I might have to skip a piece and then come back with the haybine header and then we might just hay that piece 
it's, you know, I do everything humanly possible to be able to make a good swath and and cut as easily as possible, but sometimes the crop just doesn't work with you and then it just doesn't work. So I'm hoping it'll improve by the afternoon. I literally just saw a duck fly up from underneath the reel. Yep, I just chopped over a nest. Okay, I was gonna say, <laughs> the duck is fine, she's just off her nest. So, because she flew away, there was nothing wrong with her. Um, but yeah, I was gonna say, cutting now is a lot easier, everything's dried out nicely, it's about two o'clock in the afternoon, and I have this section left, which is probably around, I want to say at least six swaths. So then I'm done cutting this field. Yun is still hanging out over there. Yep, right there. And he won't be done for a while yet. The one thing that I like about cutting alfalfa is that I get to start first and then I'm done first. So I have a couple of hours to do kind of whatever I want in the day, like a couple of other chores, other animal care things. So the pit is covered. We are done with the alfalfa silage first cut. And I'm putting my goats back and it's time to go to sleep. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, please like and subscribe and share it with a friend. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. Girl. Ah. <laughs> Go back. <laughs>